first on the lineup tonight is a special report from inside East Jerusalem, a volatile neighborhood in a disputed city just next to the Temple Mount. There, a far-right group called Teret Koenim working to move Israeli Jews into predominantly Muslim areas. Here's senior defense correspondent Shai ben -Ari with a rare look into their activity and the reactions to it. The neighborhood of Silwan is located in East Jerusalem, just below the site known to Jews as the Temple Mount and to Muslims as the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound or noble sanctuary. The vast majority of residents are Palestinian, but we came here to get a look at the latest project being run by Ateretz Kohanim, a far-right group which seeks to move Jews into predominantly Muslim neighborhoods. Daniel Luria is Ateret Kohanim's spokesman and he took us to see an old synagogue whose cornerstone was laid here in 1885. And this is the synagogue itself. This it was built to serve a community of Yemenite Jews who had immigrated a few years earlier. The last Yemenite Jews moved out of the neighborhood in 1937 following riots. The synagogue has now been restored. Here's one of the arches, the second arch over here. So the Mori was literally standing here where I am now. It's a heartwarming story, but it's not the whole story. To restore the synagogue, several Palestinian families who were living here were evicted by force after a high court ruling a few months ago. They were offered money even though they didn't need to be because they were illegal squatters who had destroyed a synagogue and who uh, had no rights here. Ateret Kohanim have had their representatives elected to the board of the trust, or Hekdesh, which now owns the strip of land where the old Jewish neighborhood once stood. Since 2004, they have managed to move over 20 Jewish families into houses here, despite the tensions involved. Luria says that forced evictions, used in the case of the synagogue, are not the usual tactic. God forbid, the word evict is something very foreign to Ateret Konim, first of all, is not focused on not courts, on not eviction. While Luria denied an emphasis on legal proceedings, the local Palestinians say otherwise. Zuhair Rajbi, who lives next door to the old synagogue, told us of his conversations with an Ateret Konim representative whose identity is under a police gag order. He said to me, listen, you're being sued. I want to present the writ to you by hand. I asked him, what are you talking about? He said, the house you're living in is our house, on our land. I'm from Ateret Kohanim. No Arab has ever, ever been forced to sell. Do you think we could get away with putting a gun to someone's head and saying sell? It doesn't happen. Rajvi told us that Ateret Kornim routinely use their connections with local and governmental authorities to crank up the pressure. He says to me, listen, I heard that in 2007 you were found guilty of fraud, that you have a record and that you were in jail. I said to him, so what? What's your problem? I was convicted in many cases. Is this a threat? Are you trying to scare me or what? The Palestinians say that most of the families who have accepted money to leave have done so after being entangled in legal fees and proceedings. An Arab sells, a Jew buys, and a Jew moves in. That's the whole story here. It's ideological real estate with a little bit of a... Uh, a volcanic political twinge. Those Jews who decide to move in do so at great risk. One family's home was attacked 126 times over a period of three months. They do their best to disconnect. This is the, what we call the country club of the Yemenite village. We converted this protected backyard because there's no alleyway where they, you know, they can't throw stones and their Molotov cocktails. The immediate neighbors can't get away with anything. But security comes at a cost. Betty Hirschman is with Iramim, a left-wing group which objects to Teret Kornim's activity. The Israeli government uh, underwrites the private security of these settlers to the tune of tens if not hundreds of millions of shekels that we taxpayers pay every year. Iramim also emphasizes that placing Jews in predominantly Muslim neighborhoods of Jerusalem complicates any prospective peace deal along the lines of the two-state solution. Ateret Kohanim, for their part, do not hide their ideological and religious motives and intend on continuing their activity. Back from there and here with me on set, Senior Defense Correspondent Chai ben good, good evening. evening. Good evening. So we see here in this report Jews moving into property owned by other Jews over a century ago in East Jerusalem. Can the same today be done for Palestinians in West Jerusalem? Uh, the short answer is no. Look, there's little doubt about this strip of land in the neighborhood of Silwan that really has a connection to that uh, older Jewish community back in the 1900s. Uh, and there's also no question that it is still owned legally by Jews. I think the major question here is whether that historic connection is enough to evict, to, to move out Palestinians who have been living here for one reason or another 
for generations. Maybe the original people were squatters, but the question here, and I think this has to be approached legally, morally, on all sorts of levels, is that enough to, to actually evict the descendants, the relatives, generations on, of people who, who maybe moved in illegally? Uh, when you ask the question about is a, a similar situation, uh, and this is very relevant, of course, is a similar situation possible on the other side of Jerusalem with Palestinians? There are thousands of homes in the western parts of, of Jerusalem, which were basically abandoned by Palestinians after one war or another. They do not have uh, the Israeli law on their side. They, can, they have no real legal option for moving back into homes that e even if they can prove that they were once the owners. So if we're talking about legal options, you've told us about how the courts have been weighing in on this effort. Where does the government stand? Has the government weighed in as well? The government has never been very public, let's say, of its support of, of a Tarot Konim, but a Tarot Konim does enjoy overt and co covert support from the government in, in a few different ways. First of all, there are questions over why exactly members of a radical right-wing uh, set group found themselves elected to really the board of this trust, which actually owns the land. Where this was basically appointed by the general custodian of the state, which is a state body. Of course, there is the issue of 24-7 uh, security, which is basically funded by the government. You're talking about all sorts of uh, private security firms, but they are paid for by the government, as well as every single neighborhood uh, being built, and this is a new neighborhood, also needs the approval of the government, and that was obtained also in this case. Shai Benary, thanks very much for this one.